Have you heard about the call of Abraham? In this lesson, we will learn how to live a life of faith. Happy Sunday. Are you missing your Sunday school? Would you like to be a part of our Sunday school? Then like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, and you'll be notified every time I post a new video on our Sunday school lesson. I also want to show you all the study Bible. This is the study Bible that people have won. Here's the actual copy of one that I'm, I'm giving away tomorrow. Y'all, it's wonderful. You will love this study Bible. So if you won and you haven't contacted me, you missed it in this book. So email me uh, and let me know. Uh, you, you know who you are. Email me so I can send you your study Bible. Hi, I'm Regina Reed, and I teach Sunday school at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Maple, Mississippi. Now, let's get into this lesson. The Call of Abraham. Our background scripture is Genesis, the 12th chapter, the first to the seventh verse, and the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 7. Our devotional reading is Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verses 8 through 19, and our key verse is Genesis, the 12th chapter, and the seventh verse. Lesson aims. One, list key features of Abraham's call and later covenant vision. Two, explain the relationship between that call and vision. And three, identify one or more ways that Abraham's obedience will serve as a model to his obedience under the new covenant. Our background scripture, Genesis 12, verses 1 through 7, and chapter 15, verses 1 through 7. Our devotional reading is Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verses 8 through 19. And our key verse is Genesis, the 12th chapter, verse 7. Let's start with the prayer. God, throughout history, you have shown yourself to be faithful. Give us faith to follow your call and patience to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Introduction. When the mouse offers you a job, you say yes. An executive chef on a Disney cruise declared, prior to his work with Disney, the chef had worked in an, ex an executive capacity at several successful restaurants. He enjoyed the line of work, but had not considered doing so on the seas. However, his name was suggested to the cruise line for a position. Eventually, someone from the company called him, conducted an interview, and made an offer. The chef accepted, and for over a decade, he had served in several upscale restaurants at sea. The chef answered the call and the decision changed his life forever. How much more so with God? When he calls, he expects a faith-filled response. His call may feel rather demanding, even overwhelming. In today's lesson, God called someone to a new context so that God's promise could be fulfilled. Lesson context. The first 11 chapters of Genesis look at humanity broadly from their creation and fall. This is Genesis, the first and the third chapter. In their acts of violence, Genesis, the fourth chapter, second through the twelfth verse, and wickedness, Genesis, the sixth chapter, verses five through six, and verses 11 through 12. To their judgment and rescue, this is Genesis, the sixth chapter, the seventh verse, through the ninth chapter and the seventeenth verse. Despite all of this, people still made attempts to focus attention on themselves. Genesis, the eleventh chapter, the first and the ninth verse. As Genesis is the first book of the Old Testament, such a broad focus is understandable. This prepares readers of all eras to hear how God worked through humanity generally and specifically through one family after the flood. Narrative. Genesis chapter 6 through 10. This text lists the descendants of Noah's son, Shem. Now this genealogy culminated with Terah, the father of, of Abram. Terah, the father of Abram. Nahar and Haran. Terah outlived Haran, the father of Lot. This is Genesis, the 11th chapter, verses 27 through 28. Terah's other sons, Abram and Nahar, were both married. However, Abram and his wife, Sarai, were unable to conceive. The family lived in Ur of the Chaldees. This is Genesis, the 11th chapter, and the 31st verse. This ancient Mesopotamian city was located on the banks of the Euphrates River. Modern archaeological 
discoveries have provided insight into the city's wealth, culture, and pagan religious practices. The family's connection to the city likely ran deep, and at one time they took part in the city's pagan religious practices. Joshua, the 24th chapter, the second verse. However, the family did not stay in Ur. Terah led Abram, Sarai, and Lot toward Cana, a land bordering the western edges of the Mediterranean Sea. This is Genesis, the 10th chapter, the 19th verse. But Terah did not complete this journey. He settled and died in Haran, an important city on a major route between Mesopotamia and Cana. Today's scripture text continues narrowing the focus as it highlights the family of Abram. Note that Abram is the same man who later had his name changed to Abraham. See Genesis the 17th chapter and the 5th verse. Lesson scriptures, Genesis the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 5 and verse 7, and Genesis 15th chapter, verses 1 through 7. Verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land I will show you. When God called him, Abram moved out in faith from Ur to Haran, and finally to Cana. Verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I will make unto you a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. Not only would this nation be blessed, God said, but other nations on the earth will be blessed through Abram's descendants. Israel, the nation that would come out of Abram, was to follow God and influence those with whom it came in contact. Abraham's part of the agreement was to obey God. Through sharp testing and an incident that almost destroyed his family, Abraham remained faithful to God. Verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Through Abram's family tree, Jesus Christ was born to save humanity. Through Christ, people can have a personal relationship with God and be blessed beyond measure. Verse four, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Verse five, and Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Cana and into the land of Cana they came. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew Lot and all his wealth, his livestock and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran. He headed for the land of Cana. God planned to develop a nation of people he would call his own. He called Abram from the godless, self-centered city of Ur to a fertile region called Cana, where a God-centered moral nation could be established. Though small in dimension, the land of Cana was the focal point for most of the history of Israel, as well as for the rise of Christianity. This small land given to one man, Abram, has had a tremendous impact on world history. Verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there build he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord, who had appeared to him. Now, altars were used in many religions, but for God's people, altars were more than a place of sacrifice. For them, altars symbolizes communion with God and commemorated notable encounters with him. 
but in rough stone and earth, altars often remain in places for years as continual reminders of God's protection and promises. Abram regularly built altars to God for two reasons. One, for prayer and worship, and two, as a reminder of God's promise to bless him. Abram couldn't survive spiritually without regular renewing his love and loyalty to God. Building altars helped Abram remember that God was at the center of his life. Regular worship helps us remember what God desires and motivates us to obey him. Lesson scripture, Genesis 15 chapter verses 1 through 7. Verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Hebrew translated here a vision occur only three other times in the Old Testament. The word stress is not necessarily on the revelation's visual component, but that a specific utterance from God had arrived. God promised to be Abraham's shield is typical of his care and protection for his people. In a dangerous new land, Abraham could take comfort in God's protection. Abraham did not want to depend on the wealth of others. Instead, he trusted that the Lord himself would be an exceeding great reward. Verse 2. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Elzar of Damascus. For the first time, we have a record of Abram responding directly to the Lord God. The response was filled with concern. Yet at this point, Abram remained childless and his wife was past the age of childbearing. How could God truly be Abram's exceedingly great reward under these circumstances? The act of transferring the heir's rights to the steward of Abram's house would have been a last resort to ensure Abram's legacy. Verse 3, And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my heir. Now, ancient adoption practices allow for a childless couple to adopt another man as household servant or steward. This person would care for the couple in their old age and provide a proper burial when they died. As a result, this person would then inherit the family property. This allowed for an heir and continuation of the family line. Verse 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. God's promises would not be diverted. This man, Elzer, would not become Abram's heir. God declared that a child from Abram's own bowels would instead be his heir. When God makes a promise, he will keep it although its fulfillment may not align with earthly expectations, this heir would be the first of many children of promise. Verse 5, And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. God had previously compared the numbers of Abram's descendants to the dust of the earth. This is found in Genesis, the 13th chapter, and the 16th verse. The numerous stars in the sky also served to illustrate God's promise. This assertion that Abram's descendants would be as numerous as the stars is one of the most prevalent promises in Scripture. Verse 6, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Rather, Abram demonstrated faith. When he trusted that these promises would come to pass, he trusted in the guarantee of those promises. Abram knew that his descendants would someday find out the Lord is faithful and keep his promises. His belief led to his being counted for righteousness, being viewed in right standing with God. Verse 7, 
And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. The Lord brought Abram from his homeland in Ur to the, the land that he promised. Abram could be encouraged because the one who would declare himself, I am. This is in Exodus, the 13th chapter and the 14th verse was guiding him. Conclusion. Abram had to answer a difficult call with boldness, courage, and faith. God had placed the call and Abram answered by way of relocating his family. Now, this decision would, would radically change his life and the lives of others for centuries. There would be times in the life of a believer when the challenge is not to find God's will, but to follow God's call. This call may lead to a different job, a new neighborhood, or even an unknown land. Yet, if we remain faithful to God and trust his steadfast promise, he will bless us deeply. And I thought to remember, God calls us. We only need to follow his directions. And if you have enjoyed this lesson, remember to share this lesson with someone. Comment, subscribe, and love each other. Get your shots. Stay six feet apart. Wear your mask. And I will see you all next week.